Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. Christmas and welcome to online worship with Liberty Church. As the bell rings to call us to worship, we invite you to take a moment to quiet yourself, to center yourself, to open yourself up to God's presence with you wherever you are worshiping. Scripture calls us to worship, saying, The heavens proclaim the glory of God, the skies display God's craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak, night after night they make God known. They speak without a sound or word, their voice is never heard, yet their message is gone throughout the earth, and their words to all the world. And so we come with joy and with thankful hearts, because our God is a gracious Father to us, because he's given himself to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. And because by the power of the Holy Spirit, God is present with us right here and right now. So come and let's worship God. invite you to take the hand of someone who's worshiping at home with you as we continue our worship now with prayer. Let's pray together. We give thanks to you, God, our Father, for mercy that reaches out, for patience that waits our returning, for your love that is ever ready to welcome sinners. And Lord, that is what we are, broken people, a mix of beauty and brokenness, sinners in need of your grace. Time after time, we enter into your presence with countless prayers and with hearts that are closed to your grace. We lift our hands to you in praise, but our feet have still walked in the ways of brokenness. We've recited your commandments, but 
we've refused to see your face in the needs of our neighbor. And so, Lord, we praise you that in Jesus Christ, you came to us with forgiveness. And that by your Holy Spirit, you move us to return to you and to receive your love. Though we are sinners, you are faithful and worthy of all praise. And so we praise you, our great God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to Liberty Presbyterian Church. We're glad you could join us for this time of worship and praise as we're on the cusp of a a new year and all the excitement that comes with that. We invite you to to be a part of the the newness that's coming to Liberty Presbyterian Church and join us this year as we we worship and study and, and grow together. Now next Sunday will be Communion Sunday. Uh, We still will be meeting uh, virtually next Sunday, so please prepare your elements and have them ready to go as we uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper together. So, welcome. We're glad you're here. Let's continue worship with some special music. of stars placed in the skies by one God. Millions of us lift up our eyes to one God. So many children calling to him by many a different name. the ways all of us pray to one God. Many the paths winding their way to one God. Brothers and sisters, there are no strangers after his work is done. For God and my God are one, one God, one God, so many children calling out loud by many a different name. One Father loving each the same. Many the ways all of us pray to one God. Many the paths winding their way to one God. Brothers and sisters, there were no strangers after his work was done. Now our God, yes, your God, and my God are
Thank you, Ann. Our scripture reading today comes from Psalm 148. Listen now for God's word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For he issued his command and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the heaven and earth. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Let's continue our worship now with prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you taught us to pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere. And so hear us as we pray for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Inspire the whole church with your power, unity, and peace. And give us grace so that all who trust you may obey your word and live together in love. Lead all the nations in the way of justice and goodwill and lead and guide those who govern so that they may rule fairly, maintain order, 
help those in need, and defend the oppressed, and so that this world may claim your rule and know true peace. Awaken people to the danger that we have inflicted upon our environment. Plant deep in each our hearts a reverence for all you have made and help us so that we may preserve the delicate balance of creation for coming generations. Give grace to all who proclaim the gospel through word and sacrament and deeds of mercy that by their teaching and example, they may reveal your love for all people. We pray especially for the church and all those places where those who preach and believe the gospel are killed because they proclaim a gospel of grace and peace. Comfort and relieve, O Lord, all those who are in trouble, those who sorrow, those who live in poverty those who live with sickness, those who grieve. This morning, especially, we pray for Patty and for those who celebrated Christmas and are facing a new year without a loved one. And we pray for all those who are close to us, who need our prayers and who we name before you in this time of silence. Heal them in body, mind, or circumstance, working in them by your grace wonders beyond all they may dream or hope. And bring to our remembrance all those who, having served you on earth, now sing your praises eternally. May their endurance give us courage and their faithfulness give us hope. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for your continued generosity to Liberty Church, and we invite you to continue with that. And you can give to Liberty by putting a check in the mail. You can use our text to give program, or you can go online and give through our website. And we encourage you to do all of that in the sure and certain knowledge that God is faithful. Amen.
Oh, man. Now that uh, Lord of the Dance is, uh, makes me smile every time I hear it. That was a favorite song of one of the matriarchs of our small church in uh, Wyoming, Mrs. Laird. Whenever that came on, she would stand up and dance. At 90 years old, I can see her dancing in the sanctuary. So thank you for that beautiful. I'm sure she's smiling from heaven right now. Please pray with me. Lord, I asked you would uphold me so that in turn I may uplift thee. Amen. You know, it seems like we spend a lot of our lives waiting, doesn't it? I think we, we, we've got a special day coming up, you know, vacation or, or a uh, time that we get to spend with family or something good we know, and we, we, get an, we wait in anticipation of that to, to happen, and we start to to build it up, build it up and, and in our mind, and when it finally comes along, we maybe be a little disappointed. But we do the same thing in reverse, too, don't we? we? We have something coming up that we're not so excited about, something we may even dread. A doctor's appointment, an exam, a confrontation we know is coming with someone, a move to a new place. And while we wait for these events to take place, we build them up in our minds, making them much worse than perhaps the reality of the situation. And then generally what happens is somebody asks us, depending on whether it was a good thing we were waiting for, a bad thing, they'll say, was it worth the wait? Or was it as bad as you imagined it was going to be? And I guess most time our answer would be the same. Uh, no, not really. It wasn't as good or as bad as I had anticipated. You know, we're, we're a people that, uh, well, we love to wait, don't we? Yeah, I can just, uh, I, I remember hearing a lot of people say, I love to stand in the DMV all day long, wait to get my new license, or I sure am glad they only opened two of the 25 checkout lanes here so I can stand in line for a while. And we all hear people comment about how much they enjoy the extra time in their car when they're stuck in a traffic jam. I know that uh, when we travel, Janet and I are always saying to each other, I sure wish there was a few more people in this security line so we could uh, wait a little longer. No, we live in an age of instant gratification. We want what we want, <laughs> and we want it right now. We don't want to wait. We don't like to wait. But the reality of it is that uh, you know, we really don't know what waiting is. I think just a couple generations removed, our parents, or, or perhaps our grandparents and our great-grandparents, you know, that waiting was just a, a, a part of their life. It was something that happened all the time. I think if you wanted to travel to Europe, you didn't just go jump on a plane and get there in a couple hours. You had a plan, and you spent days on a boat or a ship getting there. If you wanted to communicate with a loved one in another part of the country or in another part of the world, you sent a letter by post. You waited for your response in the same way. It could take months, not like today's, you know, text, instant messenger, email, where you can talk in just seconds. If you needed a specific item for, that wasn't available in your local store, you ordered it from the catalog by mail. And sometimes it would take months to get. Now our, our grandparents and great grandparents had a different perspective about waiting. But the truth of the matter is that even our grandparents and great grandparents, <laughs> they didn't understand waiting as we read about waiting in the Bible. Think about the children of Israel who have were enslaved for 400 years while waiting for the one who would deliver them from bondage. And then when Moses did show up and took them all out, they spent 40 years wandering around the desert before they could enter the promised land. The prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of the Messiah, the one that would bring a, a new order to all God's children. And the Jewish people waited and waited for close to 700 years for the Christ to be born. Think about that, 700 years, 400 years, 40 years. Now, I know I've been in some long lines. It seemed to last forever. 
But the children of Israel, they did some serious waiting. Today in our scripture lesson, we learn about a man named Simeon who spent his life waiting. He had a different concept of waiting. Let's listen as Luke describes Simeon's waiting as recorded in the second chapter, verses 22 through 40. Then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So Jesus' parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord said, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all the people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations and he is a glory to your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was a daughter of Phanel from the tribe of Asher and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. We thank God for the reading of his holy word. Our friend Simeon, like many of his ancestors, was waiting for the consolation of Israel. What that meant that the arrival of Christ, the Messiah, and the comfort and peace that the Messiah would bring with him. We don't know a lot about Simeon, but what we do know speaks volumes about the man he was. Luke recorded that Simeon was righteous and devout. I don't know, but if you had to be remembered for all time with two words, I don't think you could ask for two better words than righteous and devout. To be righteous was to be not only right with God, but with your neighbor, with everyone. To be devout meant that Simeon kept God at the forefront of his thoughts and actions. Luke doesn't tell us that Simeon was a priest or a temple worker. We don't know a lot about his family. We don't really know his profession. We do not know his age, except that after seeing and recognizing Jesus for who he was, he stated he was ready to be dismissed from this life and that he would go in peace. So we make the assumption that he was an aging man. What we do know is that Simeon was living with a promise that had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, the promise that he would see and recognize the Christ, the Messiah, before he died. So Simeon waited. We don't know if he went to the temple every day like Anna. We don't uh, know if he just waited doing his regular everyday tasks. 
But on this particular day, Simeon was moved to go to the temple by the Spirit. At the temple, Simeon saw a poor carpenter and his wife, young wife, as they brought their son in to be dedicated as the law of Moses required. Simeon's heart must have jumped with joy as he recognized Jesus for who he was and what he would mean to the children of Israel. Simeon took the baby boy in his arms and lifted up a song before God and everybody in the temple, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now may dismiss your servant in peace. Right? I'm, you have fulfilled your promise to me. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in sight of all people, a light for the revelation to, this, to the countries, to everyone, and for the glory of your people, your children, Israel. God kept God's promise to Simeon. Simeon's wait was over. And I expect if anyone had asked Simeon that day, if it had been worth the wait, Simeon would have said, oh man, you know it every second. Is recognizing what Jesus can do in our lives and who he is in our lives worth the wait? Is Christmas worth the wait? <laughs> I remember how our boys would get so excited the week before Christmas. For them, they seemed like each day was an eternity. We'd mark each day by opening the little door on our Christmas advent calendar, and it was difficult for Janet and I to keep them from opening all the days in, a, in an effort to hurry Christmas along. Everywhere we went there would be reminded of this special day coming up. The night before Christmas, we'd go to church as a family and then gather for a special meal. Of course, getting them to bed that evening was always quite a chore, as many of you know. Every sound would bring them out to see if that was Santa coming up. Finally, they'd fall asleep, but there was no sleeping in on Christmas morning. The boys were wide awake long before the rooster crowed, and we could... See the excitement in their eyes, right? The morning turned into a blur of <laughs> wrapping paper and laughter and hugs and celebration. Was it worth the wait? Oh, you know it was. How about us? Do we still get excited as Christmas approaches? What is it we get excited about? The tree, the presents, family time, the food, yeah. The sharing, sometimes we get so wrapped up in the celebration of the holiday of Christmas that we don't allow ourselves the time to get excited about what Christmas really means to each and every one of us. I'm sure you've all heard they say the spirit of Christmas is in the giving. The giving of ourselves to others as we share gifts and our most precious of commodity, our time. They say Christmas is in the giving, not the receiving. Well, I think there's great truth in this statement, but when we stop and look at what Christmas is really all about, Christmas is about receiving. Christmas represents the greatest gift, a gift of love so vast that all and so all-encompassing that, well, we can, <laughs> we can barely comprehend it. Christmas is about Emmanuel, God with us, the child born in such lowly estate, the Christ child that was gifted to all creation, the child that grew into the man, Jesus, that gave up his life so that we could live. All of us know that Christmas can be a difficult time for some people because of the circumstances in our lives. You know, we may be facing Christmas in the midst of a personal crisis or a tragedy. We may have lost a loved one, maybe in the middle of a personal conflict with someone close to us. Maybe we've got an economic problem. We've lost our job. Maybe, maybe we're living in the midst of a pandemic. Whatever the crisis we're faced with, we may think to ourselves, 
how can I face Christmas with what's going on in my life right now? You know, the death of a loved one, loss of job, whatever personal crisis we face. How in the world can I face Christmas this year? You know, the best response to that question I've ever heard comes from the author James Harnish. When someone who is in the midst of a personal crisis, they've lost a loved one, whatever their situation would be that's just tearing their heart apart, and they ask, how in the world can I face Christmas with what's going on in my life? James responds, how can any of us face any of the personal crises in our lives without Christmas? Because that's what makes Christmas worth the wait. That's why we celebrate the child born in the manger. That's why Christmas is a gift. Because we're given the child who grew into the man who saves us. Just like the Christmas hymn proclaims, good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Amen. Was it worth the wait? Was Christmas worth the wait? <laughs> Every year, without a doubt, because we are gifted with the greatest gift, the child that came to save. If you have any questions about today's message or today's passage, you want to visit with me about it, I welcome the opportunity to share with you. Give me a call. Stop by. My door's always open. And now, as the bell rings to take us out into the world, silence every voice but God's and take a moment to listen to what God has said to you today. And now, friends, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Go with God.